Hey, Gary. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? I am phenomenal. Excellent. Let's see. You should be able to see, uh, I basically made you a co-host. Um, at this point, we're not sharing a screen, but what will happen is we can both share the screen, but I can give it back to you whenever, uh, whenever it's time as such. So right now, uh, you you'll be the one. So you at your home office? I'm I no I'm at I'm at the I'm at my normal office in the factory. Okay, cool, excellent. You guys are located in Wisconsin. Yeah, just outside of Green Bay. Okay, awesome. So we'll wait for some uh, for the call to load up. It could be as many as ten as many as 50 it just we really never can tell and anyone uh that may have a question before we get started obviously it's about eight minutes before we get started i will answer any question anybody has it's not related to the topic today um anybody want to talk about how their business is doing maybe they found a uh a secret that can help everybody else right now So is that, that share icon what's going to allow us to share screens when we get there? Yes, at the bottom. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and try to share your screen now? Let's see what I want. Oh, let's see what this does. Um, there you go. Oh, that worked. Now, are you able to pull it back? Or, I, or do I have to do stop sharing to give it back to you? Um, let me see here. I'm not exactly sure. It was easy enough to do. I like that. I believe you have to give it back to me. Okay. So which is, which is fine. It's no big deal. And you probably, now you're probably back. So you have it. I got, well, I, we're, I'm not sharing it all yet. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, we're just kind of, I see Travis. How you doing, buddy? Can you hear me? I got my head on mute. I'm doing good, buddy. How are you? I'm doing great. You guys, somebody told me you guys had snow yesterday. We had snow. I've had snow the last couple of days. It's actually, it's back up to 55, 60 today, and then we're going to snow again tonight. So you guys still on, uh, everybody's on lockdown? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, it's, we're, we're still doing the kind of stay in place deal. We've got, all of our branches are open, so we have, uh, counter people at all our at all four locations uh, we've got our warehouse team in so we're still doing deliveries and still we're still open at all the branches they just have kind of you know, everyone who can work from home is working from home okay yeah which is good I love it you know 25 years of being in the on your side of the business I uh, I loved actually being a t to me the territory manager's job is the is the greatest uh, is the greatest job in the industry. It really is because you know when they're busy, no, I love it's, sort of like, it's sort of like having grandkids. You know, you can come <laughs> play with them a little bit, and when you send them home, you know, and and um, <laughs> anyway, it's true. <laughs> go visit your guys, and then once you're once you're done, it's up to them to implement. You know. Yeah, and I tell the guys all the time. You know, the beauty of what of our job is we get to see how a bunch of different companies do it. You know, I, I tell them all, if there was a magic bullet, we'd all be doing it. We all, we'd all we be doing everything the same way and we'd all be making, you know, crazy money. I said, it just, what works for one guy doesn't necessarily work for another one. However, there's no need to reinvent the wheel, just tweak it a little bit. Yeah, that's right. I agree. You know, and the thing is, is that a lot of guys, um, I get it a lot of times, like they think about the, their competition, you know, and, and, um, you know, you think about our competition, our, in our industry, we're so, we're probably one of the only service industries that has very coagulated in that, you know, I know somebody, you know somebody in California or in Philadelphia, and like you couldn't say that for the plumbing industry or the electrical industry or, and so we tend to share ideas more than, I mean, right. I guarantee you, you don't have a, 
and there's probably nowhere in America right now that you've got a, a, a group of electrical guys on a call talking about, you know, what is the best way to sell a light switch. Um, right. And so that being said, for me, I've always considered my competition is, is not the guy that's just, you know, a mile down the street. My competition, because if, if I'm vying for the discretionary income of the dealer or of the consumer, you know, my, my competition is the guy that wants to go buy a boat or he wants to go buy a car or he wants that second home, you know, or that really big vacation. Because the only thing I've got to offer them is you know, an air conditioner or heating system or, or whatever it is. And so I, I don't know why more dealers, it at least seems to me like it's getting a little bit better that more dealers in markets seem to do a little more, you know, kind of networking, you know, outside of, you know, I mean, we don't want any collusion or anything, but right. just talking about, you know, what is our message? And certainly among a distributor, you guys were able to kind of navigate through that. No, I, yeah, no, absolutely. And it's, and it's great for us with partners. I mean, it's as long as we're all good partners, right? I mean, and that's kind of what we've been telling our guys. We've been on the phones. The first week was panic. You know, everybody was panicking a little bit. Second week, guys had – were starting to get an idea of what it was going to look like and had some plans together. Um, you know, third week, it's, all right, we're tired of doing it this way. But, you know, everyone's kind of changed their game, and they're already doing, you know, whether it's a virtual sales call or, you know, hands-off, obviously hands-off um, service calls. I mean, just – everything's changed, which some of it will probably stick around with us for sure, but we're all getting a little bit better because now there's, you know, there's a few less leads. There's, it, I think it's good from a sales aspect because it makes everybody kind of stop and do it. And for us in Colorado, quite honestly, April is not crazy busy for us most of the time anyway. So, right. You know, we're, we, you know, calls are slower, but they were never incredible in April anyway. Are you encouraging your guys to to apply for the the PPP loans or the other? The Absolutely. Other loans? Okay, good. Yeah, every all... single one of them. Okay, good. Excellent. I mean, we're you know, and we're sending it out to them. Um, I actually one of one of the things we just did. Um, I was just on the phone with two of my guys this morning because I had I had one guy get funded uh, this morning, so he'll That's actually great. be able to do it, use it for payroll today. Um, yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm actually, I want everybody to do it. I would prefer that every, and even if they don't need it. Right. I'm like, guys, just, you know, utilize it. And it's not for, it's not for the owners and it's for their, it's for their employees. Right. I mean, the money was funded regardless of whether you use it or not. So if you get it and you use it for exactly. the, if you use it for the purposes that they have said for you to use it for, then it will be forgivable. That's so, awesome. right. Um, I don't know why we, right. you know, we, uh, in all the business that I'm involved in, we, we applied for it. Um, I don't know if we'll get it or not, but you know, if we do, we do. And if we don't, you know, it's what it is, you know. I, I actually went, went through that process. And on the last page where you check off a bunch of stuff, one of the checks was without, without this loan, or saving within it, I need this, I need this loan or I will not be able to continue my business. So there's some statement to that level. And I was like, oops, <laughs> I, I guess I'm not, I'm not going to check that because that would be completely untrue. So I, we, we bowed out of it, but you know, we're, I guess we're fortunate that we're going full steam. So I'll leave those funds out there for the guys who really need it. But it was, it was, sure. it was interesting. And there's a statement in there that that it's by the company has to have it to stay in business. And sorry. well, and the, you know, on the flip side is most guys can't answer that. They don't know how to answer that. Right. Right. right? I mean, they don't know what it's going to look like. How long is this going to go? Is it, you know, is it another couple of weeks and we start to slowly implement and do different uh -huh. things? Is it, you know, six months? Nobody knows. Right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the, the the very least, they fund it, you pay it back, or you, you know, they take it back from you. I, I don't know. I, I'm not an accountant, not an attorney. Um, my uh, my wife is Vietnamese, and 
like most Vietnamese, they do nails and she, she and her cousin own a nail store and they worked right up until the state of Florida basically told them that they couldn't be open anymore. And so now none of them are getting paid. So for that business, we, you know, we applied for it and hopefully we'll get it. Um, and uh, sure. because they, they really they talk about being in someone's personal space. I mean, when you're touching someone's hands and feet, I mean, it really is a uh, you know, personal experience. So um, I encourage everyone to, uh, to at least apply for it. Um, uh, and if they're, they're actually, if you look at yesterday's uh, webinar and I posted it to YouTube, um, the, the developer of our program, Blow Miller Proposals, HVAC Biz Pro, the, the developer was our guest speaker. And on that, he actually does, did a webinar on how to navigate through that whole PPP transaction um, and he posted it to the chat. So if you go to yeah. YouTube and go to our channel and you want to look at that, um, I'd be happy to send it to anyone that wants to, uh, to look at it. So um, we've been doing these uh, webinars now for a couple weeks since uh, everybody got started and with, with the uh, shutdown and, and uh, we've had a, you know, a good response um, today, I have uh, Gary Narrett on the phone. Hopefully I said that right, Gary. Um, yeah. uh, he's with Premier One. And um, so Gary's company, and I'll let him, I won't let, I won't steal his thunder, but um, when we talk about uh, increasing revenue or even answering solutions or, or problems with solutions, a lot of times contractors and their technicians really don't understand uh, what it is that uh, when they go in a home, they'll hear somebody say, you know, who, who in your home suffers from allergies or asthma? And the, 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 a lot of times, and you hear sit in sales training, they'll say, ask that question. And what, what is interesting to me is, well, what, after you've asked that question, what is your response? Like, what are you gonna, what are you gonna offer based on what they said their problem was because there's, there's uh, different solutions for different problems. You certainly wouldn't wanna put a, a, a filter in for somebody who has a problem with chemicals. So I'm gonna let uh, Gary uh, talk just a little bit about the products that they sell and educate us on that. And then what we'll do is we'll go into the program and I'll show you how you can enter some of that stuff into upgrades um, into uh, parts, and then uh, and then if you have any questions along the way, please uh, either chat um, with us, raise your hand, or uh, and then we'll uh, we'll answer those as as as, uh, as quickly as we can. So I'm going to turn it over to Gary and let him talk. Alrighty, thanks, Dwayne, and I'm I'm going to try it in, in about 15 minutes. Re relay what we normally do in an hour or 90 minutes, so a very abridged a version of it, but it'll it'll certainly give you an idea of why we're doing things the way we are, and then and then, you know, again what what the what the opportunity is uh, for for the, for the contractors. And let's see here. So I was just. Um, like all of us watching all the stuff on the news and it, it's kind of fun when when you actually run into something that that really mirrors what what you're doing and this this is just something that was on by fox news and you know would they're talking about the use of, of uvc in hospitals and and it was kind of cool if you go to the bottom paragraph to use this, this doctor saying that technology exists today that can bring the UV light into each patient room, public space, continuously treating the air for free circulating viruses and bacteria and fungi. This can be done in a safe, effective manner. And, you know, the links there at the bottom, I, we could get to anybody if they want to read the whole article. But it was kind of cool just to see exactly what we're doing now all of a sudden is, is, is up on the local news. And, you know, the awareness that the consumer has is certainly huge within that same searching I was doing, look, looking for new, new stuff. I found this uh, Harrison Memorial Hospital air handling room and it was, it, it was really interesting to me that they're using lamps very similar to where we are, where we put one of these in a residential system. They're putting hundreds of them in this air handling room for this hospital and 
you know, to do the exact same thing, try to neutralize bacteria and viruses as they flow through the building air. And, you know, it isn't very fancy. It's just a matter of putting in enough intensity to take care of the airflow going through. So it's, it's kind of shows that the limit to what we can do is endless. It's just a matter of, of knowing how many lamps and, and how, how to position them in a different types of air handlers and, and where we can go from there. So, you know, there's three basic areas in the home of, of pollutants. We're worried about particles, germs, and gases. We got this from the Center for Disease Control. And we, we like it because if we're talking about killing bacteria and viruses, they can see that we sell particles to deal with, or if we're talking about oxidizing gases, um, we still have bacteria and viruses to deal with or particles. So, you know, it's a, it's a, whenever you can make something simple, it just makes it easier to convey it to the homeowner. We didn't always have the problem we have. This, this happened when we came up with our energy standards, tightened up the homes, put in thermal pane windows, wrapped them in plastic instead of the home having a natural air exchange every couple hours. We sealed them up. They're efficient, but now everything's trapped inside. So the air in the homes became extremely polluted. So if we look at back to that pie chart, just take a look at bacteria and viruses. You ever think about, we get colds and flus in the winter and in the summer, you know, it's, it's typically not a big deal. It's just because of the length of the days. We have more bacteria and viruses um, into the fall. And I don't know, can you see whose mic needs to be muted there, Dwayne? Or maybe you can't do it. Um, it's right here. You need to know we will meet the former NFL player who traded the gridiron for the uh, and now, it's very nice. I can't. Or if I goof that up playing with it. Uh, oh, well. At any rate. Um, Looks like it may be Josh or Joe. Can you, uh, can you mute them? No. Not used to this program. That should be, it sounds like you got rid of the noise. Oh, sounds like, I think, yep, I think we're good to go again. Oops, what did I do now? There we go. So it's really just a sun cycle. We get colds and flus in the winter. In the summer, they seem to go away. In the spring, the days get longer. You have more ultraviolet light. We're very good midsummer. We could wash in our hands. We're not worried about it. We get into the fall, the days get shorter. It's cold and flu season. Get your flu shots. And again, Christmas, we're the worst, the shortest life cycle. And then back to the next spring, things seem to dissipate and they go away. And with this coronavirus, we're even hearing a lot of talk now that they hope this is like the seasonal cold and flu and 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 dissipates going into the summer. And by next fall, you know, if we have a vaccine or a therapy it'll be a whole different picture and most likely it will dissipate going in, into summer the same as the other bacteria and viral infections do. So the easiest way to look at UVC is we're taking what nature does outside in the summer and reproducing it in the ductwork the forest air system, cleaning the air in our homes the way the sun cleans the air outside is in principle what we're doing. So if we shine UV light with a proper microwatt output, which is critical, It'll disturb the DNA of a microorganism, pass them by, sterilize it, and make them harmless and incapable of reproducing. According to Westinghouse, if we have the correct intensity, we can actually expect a 70 85% kill uh, in, in the system. And any surface we irradiate is going to be sterile. So if, we're, if we have a smelly coil from, um, and a heat pump from dirty sock syndrome, if we're irradiating the coil, we won't have any growth on the coil or bacteria in the drain pan. And, that, that'll, that'll stop that problem. As I said, the design parameters did come from Westinghouse way back in 1984. That catalog's looking a little bit old. That's when it was published. And on the top right, you can see that they're telling us to put the lamp in the duct so we get upstream and downstream irradiation. So we actually kill things as they approach the lamp and then as they go beyond it. So that's what gives you time and distance to actually have a reaction. In the top right, they're showing if we put the lamp in and just shine it across the duct, it won't work because the air will zip over the top of the lamp, but there wasn't any time, so it actually can't kill. Or you turn that same lamp and, and get upstream and downstream radiation to give us time, this will work. And the bottom right is giving us a residential design parameter, and it's, it's a little tight. 
what it's saying is we need 110 microwatts of, I guess I'll go back to it. We need 110 microwatts of intensity to get that 70 to 85% kill they're, they're talking about up to uh, air handler 2400 CFMs. So 2400 CFMs would be a five ton unit. I'm sorry, a six ton unit. So our thinking was if we made 110 microwatt unit, we could put it in a two, three, four, or five ton unit, we get a great kill because we actually sized it for six. What we ended up doing is making 180 microwatt unit. So as these lamps age, we can say about that 110 microwatt threshold. So at the end of two years, instead of 180, we have 130. Getting close to the end of three years is when we hit 110. So that gave us our, our two year lamp replacement cycle. So an analogy I like, if, if you lit a match, you could burn yourself with it. If you want to heat a home, you need tens of thousands of BTUs. That lit match is one BTU, same technology. It's going to be the application of it. If we look at UV products that out there we're familiar with, most of them are 45, 55 microwatt. They're made to keep a coil clean, and they do a good job of it. Those came out of the south and the Florida area. We're out here in Wisconsin. We're worried about spreading colds and flus. We knew what they're doing in hospitals with putting high microwatt UV in their duct systems so they don't spread pathogens throughout the hospital. We thought how cool would it be to make a residential product that works on the same principles of what they're doing in the hospital. That gave us 180 microwatt units. So we're very different because we had a different design parameter and a different, different need. We're trying not to spread colds and flus and germs. The other guys were trying to keep a coil clean. So it makes us very unique, you know, for, for a logical reason. If we look at the application of these products, and this is just a generic PCO unit, the air that goes through that cell, we're going to sterilize, there's no question. The air goes around that cell, we're going to do nothing to. That Those units typically have a broad spectrum lamp in it that breaks up oxygen molecules, so they make hydroxyl radicals, um, single oxygen molecules attached to other gas molecules and break them up, ozone and maybe a little hydrogen peroxide. That blends into the airstream, so you get a freshening effect in the house, but the air that you actually sterilize has to go through the unit. And, and when you logically look at this in a duct with air taking the path of least resistance, you're gonna get, well, 1% of the air for lucky would, would decide it wants to go through those little 16th inch holes in that cell. The rest of it's gonna go its natural path. So the sterilization effect is gonna be limited the freshening effect is going to be great because that's going to blend in with the air. Where in our case, we're going to put that high microwatt UV lamp in the duct and we're going to treat 100% of the air the same as they do in hospitals as the air passes through deactivating those microorganisms so they, so they can't reproduce. So very different application of a similar technology. It's just, again, what we we're trying to do is different than what the other guys were trying to do. This is a good example of this. This was a Ebola isolation suite in a hospital back five, six years ago. We had the Ebola thing, and you can see in the yellow, they're using um, HEPA filtration for inward and outward air. You know, we have HEPA filtration, UV sterilization, recirculated air. That's exactly what we do. Negative pressure UV exhausted and filtered contaminants. So to hold negative pressure on these, these patient rooms, obviously you have to blow air out outside of the building to have a negative air on those rooms. And they take that air, run it through a HEPA filter and over a bank of UV lights, and then it's good to blow right out in the public. So kind of a real nice example of, of um, taking a, a very dangerous virus and, and neutralize it with UVC light. And then, you know, you have sterile air that you can do anything with. So kind of neat to see that. So that brings us to a simple duct mount uh, 403 unit, I'm sorry, 401 unit, 180 microwatts can be return side or supply side mounted. Uh, a single, uh, same unit, but on a remote model where we have the power supply separate from the lamp, lamp can go above, above or below the coil. These are 120 through 240 volt ballast, so they work on heat pumps or on gas units, lifetime warranty on the electronics with the two year warranty on the lamps. There's a dual lamp version of it, which is enough UV for a 10 ton air handler, or we can put a lamp above or below the coil and a lamp in the return side. Again, lifetime warranty. Excuse um, me, Ray. Yep. So on that 
120 or 240 volt ballast is is it one unit and then or are they two separate units it's actually an auto sensing ballast so whatever power you apply to it it just works so anything from actually 100 volts all the way up to 250 you just supply it and it just works it, it, okay. it automatically regulates itself which really makes it goof proof okay and i know i'm going fast but i don't want to take up your whole too much time so i'm just kind of it's like an overview will zip through this stuff and oh, anybody no, who wants something more detailed we'll, we'll we'll do a session just on this stuff with you but and again, lifetime on that, that'd be enough UV for, for um, 10 ton. This, if we're looking at like commercial, this would, you know, this would be one lamp for a five ton unit. If we had a 10 ton unit, you have a bigger duck, obviously. We take them in from opposite sides to get complete cross section of air. That would be enough UV for 10. A 20 ton rooftop. We'd want to do something similar to this where we could get four lamps in and get complete coverage of, of, of the air. So even when we're looking at this residentially or like commercially, this isn't rocket science. If this was a 40 ton unit, guess what? We'd have eight of them, you know, so you can very easily um, sock size this and, and do these like commercial jobs and, and get a good deactivation of, of microbial. So it, it's, it's actually kind of nice that it's, this simple. It's 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 a lamp per 2,000 cfm of airflow. So we would figure out any air handler and what's going through there. And you know we're a little concerned with feet per minute and, and some stuff on some commercial equipment if that gets crazy. But usually it doesn't. You know it's not energy efficient to have undersized duct and very high static pressure. So not only the feet per minute will you know roll right into to to where we want it to get these these good kill rates. I want to talk a little bit, little bit about odors and gases. It, it's something that all of us are doing in the industry, and, and it, it does, it does for the most part, roll around oxidation. Um, all, all the PCO units that are out there um, use broad spectrum lamps, and again, those broad spectrum lamps break up oxygen molecules. And when you do that, you're going to get hydroxyl radicals, single, single oxygen molecules, you're gonna get ozone and you can get a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. The, the one that's easy to measure and people like to talk about is ozone. That's really not our main oxidizer, but it's part, part, of, part of the process. Outdoors, normal air is 0.05 parts per million of ozone. It's been that way for tens of thousands of years. It's normal air around the planet. If we got rid of it, it would be the end of life on Earth because that is what is oxidizing all the, the rotting leaves and the waste and, and manure from animals and, and things that are dead out there that are off-gassing. And in nature, its primary function is taking all this off-gassing stuff and, and breaking it back to where it started, which is carbon dioxide and, and water is the end and, and, and oxygen. And of course, carbon dioxide is absorbed by trees and then they produce oxygen. So it's, it's a normal function of the planet, you know, really has nothing to do with, with us um, making carbon dioxide with our power plants and all the interesting things we're doing to upset the planet, but it's, it's, it's the way the planet, planet works. So indoors, there's no ozone in the house when we close the windows. Um, the house gets stuffy, gets heavy in there, we open the windows up and that fresh, crisp outside air comes in, well, what's different? That outside air has the natural oxidants in it, the inside air doesn't. Now, when we open the windows, we have measurable ozone and oxidant in the home. Close the windows, within a few hours, it's getting stuffy again, it's all used up and we don't have it. So trace amounts are actually a good thing. Too much of it is absolutely horrible. Um, none of it is, De what we call dead air. It's just, just this heavy, stuffy air. So we, we want to try to balance this a little bit, but we, we don't want to get carried away with it. So if we use a hundred, that UVC lamp that we're talking about that does a killing is 264 nanometer lamp that does not make any ozone or oxygen. A broad spectrum lamp goes all the way down to below 185 nanometer wavelength. That lamp breaks up oxygen molecules and that's what's typically used for ozone production and that's what's in the majority of the PCO units. They are oxidizing units and they use an oxidizing lamp to create that and 
I mean, in general, it's 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 a it's a good thing. So, oh, hey Gary, yep. uh, can you hear me? I can. Can you, can you go back to that slide? Yes. So I think that this is a very important sl uh, slide for someone trying to understand like what the application of a particular light that goes into a house. Um, UVC, obviously, that 264 nanometers, um, that's what's going to, um, to really give you a, a great effect um, in a home. Am I wrong in saying that? You're, you're absolutely correct. That's the muscle. That's, that's the lamp that is going to kill bacteria, viruses, mold spores, and, and actually purify the air. So the, out, out of our product, you know, we have models that, that as I showed you, that first unit, I two units I showed you, they're strictly UVC units, and all they do is, is deactivate microorganisms as they go through and there's no odor control or freshening. So that's that's the workhorse. The, the 185 nanometer lamp is kind of for fun. That's getting rid of cooking odors, pet odors, it is lowering VOCs, but it is not it's not the animal that, that's going to stop us from spreading colds and flus. That big powerful UVC lamp is, is the one that's going to actually kill things. Perfect. So we're going to do this a little different than what you guys are used to that sell competing products. We're going to do this oxidizing part in the return side of the system. Everybody else does it on the supply. I want to, on the return side, I want to break up oxygen molecules. Now I got singlet oxygen, I got hydroxyl radicals, I've got ozone, and if we're lucky, we might get a little hydrogen peroxide, but that doesn't that's a very poor reaction, so it's very minimal. We're taking all this along with the airstream and we're taking it into that blower. By the time we go through the blower, that's our mix master or blender. It's like we're making a margarita. We've got the ice in there, all the mix in, turn it on, blend it all together. When we go through that blower, those oxidants we've created have absolutely no choice but to touch and, and grab onto other gas molecules. We're forcing a reaction. At that point, 80, 90 percent of all the oxidant we made is going to, is going to attach to, a, to another gas molecule, and that, that will create the oxidizing process. By the time we push it up through the evaporator, heat exchanger, supply duct, going downstream, I can take a meter and, and stick it right in the supply in any home that has our product in it, and, and ozone will read zero parts per million. So what we've actually accomplished is cleaning air in the ductwork, the force air system, putting no measurable oxidant into the house. We have no liability of any kind. There's nothing we can possibly be doing that would be a challenge for that homeowner. All we're doing is freshening the air in the house, lowering VOCs. The germicidal lamp is neutralizing bacteria and viruses. You walk in your house, it's nice and fresh smelling. You know, it's all win, win, win for everybody. <laughs> If we do it the other way, like the competitors, let's just put it in the supply side. We break up these oxygen molecules, all the same reactions happen. We blow them in the house. Willy nilly, they're floating around and if they bump into a gas molecule, they latch onto it, oxidize it. If they don't find anything to do in approximately 20 minutes, they'll break apart on their own and, and you'll, you'll go back to just having the oxygen you originally had. So, when we do it on the return side and, and blend all this together, it's very efficient. We really get the opportunity to oxidize gases and get work done. When we blow it in on the supply side, the majority of it's wasted because it, it didn't necessarily find a gas molecule and we're breathing it and dealing with it living in the house. And you know, a lot of people are very sensitive to ozone. Even, even in our case, you'll occasionally find someone that, that doesn't like it and we're doing it so so much differently than the competitors. It's, it's a whole different ball game. The other thing we're doing is unique is we're only making our oxidant when the fan's running. So we use a program start ballast, which allows us to turn that unit on literally 100,000 plus times in the life of the lamp. So we can cycle it with the blower. So we only, it's energy efficient. We're only operating when we have airflow. Again, you're, you're making this tiny bit of oxidant you don't want to 
make that without airflow. If you make a little bit for three hours, you actually made something. And then the blower comes on and you clear all that out and, and the, the, your customer will say, you know, why every time the fan cycles on, do I get a goofy smell in the house? Well, it's because we have an oxidizing UV product that runs all the time without airflow. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. But if we want to cycle it, then we have to use the technology that allows it. So that program start ballast is key. The standard ballast used in UV products are rapid start ballast, and they're good for about 2,000 starts on the lamp. So if you wire up a unit with a rapid start ballast to the AC terminal, the lamp will burn out in a couple months. So the competitors say, leave them on all the time because they need to. In our case, we want it cycling with the system. So that takes us up a notch on units. Now we have the 403 unit. We got that nice, powerful 180, 256, 64 nanometer UVC lamp that's deactivating microorganisms. And we got a limpy, a little five inch, and I'll say wimpy oxidation lamp that's breaking up gas molecules and freshening the house and making the house smell better. What's better yet is on that little five inch lamp, we have a patented adjustment and it's actually simply a shutter that changes how much of that light can go in the duct. So let's say we have an 1800 square foot home and two people live in it and, and you know, they, they don't cook much and eat out and they're both to work every day. They don't have any pets. It's going to take very little to have that house nice and fresh. We're next door, same house, same builder, same HVAC, but we, we've got a family of five with two cats and a dog and mom cooks all the time. Well, that load is totally different. So for this to work, we can't size by square footage. We have to size by load. They have to, it, every home's different. So these have to be adjustable and they have to be adjustable by the homeowner so they can match it to their house. What's critical on the high setting in a house with no load, can it do any harm? It can't. It's not capable of creating an undesirable amount, but you may smell it a little bit. I don't want to smell it. I want them to be able to back it off where it's just neutral and the house is fresh. There isn't anything to smell. On the other side of that, does that lamp also is going to lose 15% of output per year. So if we install that in year one and half is right, in year two, it'll need to be to three quarter. And then going into year three, they'll have it on high and find that it's just not taking care of the odors. And the tech comes in and, you know, they'll say, geez, you know, love that UV unit, but it sure doesn't work like it did when you installed it. You can say, well, ma'am, you know, it's, we're over two years now. It's time to put a new press set of lamps in it. And you put some in and it's back to 100% performance again. So that odor control lamp helps you sell the unit because they can tell that something actually isn't working as well as it was when you started. Remote version of it also, you can put lamp above or below the coil. We still want the oxidation unit over in the return. So again, we, we take it through the blower and use that blower for the oxidizing process. Patented consumer oxidation control. Again, the 120 through 240 smart ballast, lifetime warranty on the unit with two years on the lamps. There's a three lamp version of this, which would be enough again for 10 ton. Two, two lamps plus the oxidation unit. And we'll quickly talk a little bit about particle removal. Uh, the EPA is telling us that indoor air is two to five times and can be as much as 100 times more polluted than the worst exterior air. Quite a statement when people go in their homes, you think that's their safe place and it's clean in there. Again, because the homes are so energy efficient and tight, that inside air is really very poor. The outside air is much better and you know, it's a surprise to everybody. Uh, newborns are very sensitive to microscopic particles, so if we bring that new baby in the house and there's a high uh, load of microscopic particles, which is typical in every tight home, that causes inflammation in their lungs. And those, those lungs develop under inflammatory state and that's the baby grows into the adult with asthma and allergies. Same house, same baby, we remove those microscopic particles so we don't have something upsetting the lungs. In this case, they're talking about dust mite debris, which is manure from dust mites, which is the largest allergen in every home. We take that out. We don't have something upsetting the lung tissue. The baby's lungs develop normally, grows into adult without asthma and allergies. The clincher to this is, according to Ohio State University Extension, there's no cure, only prevention. If we once we goof up those lungs, you have, you're sensitive, hypersensitive to particles the rest of your life and you're, you have asthma and allergies. If, if we can start you out 
right at the beginning, so your lungs develop normally, then you're not sensitive the rest of your life. So it, it's, it's a pretty big thing for the young families. So indoors, wall soon and floors have a positive charge. When we take air through an air handler, the friction of taking the air through the air handler rubs a positive charge on the particles. So if we have positive particles, a positive room, it's like pushing two south pole magnets together, they're gonna to repel. Particles smaller than one micron are just gonna float. They're permanently suspended. The scientific term for that's Brownian motion. And if you just Google it, it'll say permanently suspended particles by a like charge. What's cool is you can see it. You get that sunbeam, the perfect time of the afternoon coming in. That's the light reflecting off those microscopic particles. That's dust mite debris, skin flakes, animal dander, carpets, fibers out of the carpet. All these things that when you breathe it in can absorb directly in your bloodstream. We need that out of the air. That's what's goofing up the asthma and allergies and very bad for the elderly and, and extremely dangerous for infants. It's, it's easy to get it out, um, but we have, to, we have to do it. The other side to this is when you, when you sneeze, obviously the big stuff's gone right to the floor, but the, the atomized particles that are really tiny it takes them a while to drift to the floor, but envision if you have, if you have a 0.3 micron particle, the viruses are much, much smaller than that. If these particles are floating in the air and you sneeze a virus onto a particle and it piggyback rides on it, now you have a suspended virus floating around the house. You walk through the house, you can walk through the house five hours later after somebody sneezed and that thing's still hovering on the piggyback riding on that particle, you can breathe it in. So. If we remove those particles and you sneeze and there's nothing for it to land on or float on, it will eventually find its way to the floor. You know, the atomized stuff, it might, it may take it three hours to find its way to the floor, but it will get there with the tiny particles in the air. It'll, it'll hover around all the time. This is a, a big deal for spreading infections around the home. You know, obviously if we suck it through the return and take it over the UV light, um, we, th we think that that microorganism is gonna be harmless, but we, we have to get it there. What's cool is we have a air handler in the house. We're getting three to five air exchanges per hour. We have a filter in the system. We can, we can solve this problem. The challenge is gonna be that 98% of indoor air particles are actually smaller than one micron. And actually, if you look over here where these viruses are 0.3 to 0.005, <clears throat> these permanently suspended particles are larger than that virus, it, it can, piggyback ride on them and that's that's where the danger comes in there. If we look at typical filter technologies, let's just cut the chase and go down to something very good, a MERV 11 extended media filter. Low static, clean blower, clean coil, clean supply duct work, six month maintenance. This is an incredible product. That's going to remove one micron and larger out of the air. So that and if 98% of the indoor particle load smaller than one micron, that filter is going to remove 2% by mass of the particle load out of the house. 98% of the particles are so tiny go through the pores of the filter. So we're taking out the big stuff and protecting the equipment, but as far as what makes us sick, we're doing nothing with that filter. We looked at an electronic precipitator. That actually will take out all of that haze that's in the house and give us a clean air state in the house. So that charge technology is Wonderful. Challenge is there's not a homeowner on the planet that'll maintain it, pull those cells out every month and wash them and put them back in. But if they actually would, this is a very, vi very, very viable solution. We have the, the polarized media and the HEPA, they both cling to the, the full length of the scale and, and they're both, both easy for the homeowner. So a nice analogy, chain link fence around the backyard, 100% efficient to keep the neighbor's dog out, the flies and gnats are going right through it. It's the same thing going on in the house. The air handler is running. We're taking out all the big stuff. The little stuff is, is sneaking through that filter. So if we look at that polarized media air cleaner, you know, simply we're taking 24 volts into the power supply, boosting it up to 7,000 volts. We have a, a screen in the middle that probes touching it. We're charging that media negative with 7,000 volts of DC positive particles into a negative filter, they're opposite, it attracts them, grabs them, and electroplates them in, kind of similar to that electronic precipitator. We change the media every four months, you know, the maintenance easy, super low static, 
because we didn't have to collect because the filter's tight, we're collecting because of the charge. So a very neat, easy retrofit. How can the tech pass us on concept onto the homeowner? Geez, you have a really nice energy efficient home on the challenge that creates there and the home becomes very polluted. Microscopic particles that cause asthma and allergy are so small they go right through your conventional filter. I've got an electric filter, it works like a magnet, remove those particles, it fits in your existing filter act. You think this would benefit the health of your family? And the hard part, stop talking and listen. You know, what did we do here? Complimented the home. You say, you know, the side effect of it being so tight and energy efficient is the air just becomes very polluted. You know, it's great. We have this very energy efficient air handler. All the air in the house goes through there several times a day. You know, if the challenge is conventional filters, these particles are so small, they go right through it. I've got something unique. It's an electric filter, works like a magnet, remove them. Would that benefit the health of your family? They do that on four cleaning checks per day. Um, 20 times a week, they'll install two or three a week. It's, it's just, it's not a hard process for the guys. There's actually a, a nice video of it that I'm not going to take time to play, but that, that lays that out for the tech with the homeowner. Or may, meh, maybe I should. We'll listen to it quick. Um. Conventional filters are not able to collect the smallest particles, which are also the most harmful to your health. Our polarized media air cleaner is an effective solution to collect these harmful pollutants. The collectors that arrest collect and electroplate submicronic particulate to the fiberglass medium. It's so efficient, it provides a true clean air state in 12 to 24 hours in the average home. Single pass efficiency is also very high. To show you just how well a polarized media air cleaner works, we set up a little demonstration. Since we're not able to reach out into the air and pull out a handful of particles, we devised this unit to collect a concentrated amount of contaminants in the form of cigarette smoke. Although commonplace, the materials in cigarette smoke happen to be the same size as the harmful particulate that's found indoors, sizes less than one micron. Watch what happens when only the fan is switched on and the air flows through the fiberglass medium. The smoke is merely pushed around, but not removed from the air. This is similar to what happens with conventional filters. Now watch what happens when the system is activated. All of the visible as well as the invisible particulate are electroplated to the filter medium and the air is cleaned. So kind of, kind of a nice visual on the iPads of the text, you know, they're, they're talking about this electric filter works like a magnet and he says, you know, here's a 30 second video that actually shows how that process works, um, makes, makes it easy for them. There are retro panels that actually slide into media cabinets that have rails built on them. So we, we can upgrade a, a MERV 11 to the, an actual electronic air cleaner. Vice versa, we can pull it out and shove the MERV 11 back into if we'd ever want to. So we're not damaging the integrity of that um, media cabinet in any way by doing it. Literature again has a pie chart on it with, with the three areas of, of challenge. And then simply, you know, if we install the filter, we're going to take care of microscopic particles. If we put in the germicidal UV, we're, we're going to deactivate bacteria and viruses. If we put in the premium UV, we'll be able to deactivate bacteria, viruses, and oxidize gases and odors. Or if we put in the combination of the two, it'll be a you know, full solution as far as particles, germs, and gases, along with air exchanges and, you know, humidification, dehumidification, everything else we know that's critical for good air or good indoor air environment. But, you know, sim making it simple is, is the key thing that, that um, the tech understands why there's a problem, why this works, and then, you know, believing in it and, and installing it, um, some, something that he believes in. HEPA units actually on the back. You know, for the guys to be successful if the unit's on the truck, so when they make the call, they can install e immediately and not make another appointment to come and waste, waste all that service time, that, you know, all the stuff they can install within, you know, 20 minutes or so, their quick installs. And out the homeowner literature on every, every call, and we provide that at no cost to all of our contractors that we partner up with. And just take that one minute, literally, to just talk about 
a tight energy efficient home and you know the, the the challenge that creates is the air inside becomes very poor and we just have some really new products that that address that you know and you know it's, if you have interest i'd sure like to tell you a little bit about it it's, it's not it's not a hard conversation with 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 the homeowner opportunity wise what we typically see is, is 50 to 100,000 per truck um, per year. Every every service truck on, on the guys that, that are in the program, we do NAIT certified on-site trainings. We'll come out and, and, and train the guys or we, we do WebEx trainings. But this this is one out of every 20 calls installing a product will hit, hit these numbers. We, we've got technicians that, that install you know three and four UV units religiously per week and you've got tech that does one a month you know it's, it just depends upon the talent and how devoted they are I, I can tell you now after after this whole uh, coronavirus mess the consumer is much more open to doing something for indoor air quality and what we don't want is a carpet cleaning guy the orkin guy and everyone else going in that house and selling them some type of air filter or uv light and cutting holes in our systems and installing them we need the text to at least leave the literature and let them know that we have the solution and that will prevent non-professionals from going in and hacking up our systems with, with products that, that don't work as advertised. So it's critical that, that we get to the point where the text let every single homeowner know that, you know, we, we installed your system, we're warranting it, and we, we, we have IEQ products that, that, that we guarantee work and we'll stand behind them and you know let us be the one to take care of anything that, that connects to this HVAC system. So I'm going to give this back to you, Duane, and we can go to questions. And I know you, you've got some great, great stuff here for us. Here we go. Okay, perfect. So does anyone have any questions? I have some of my own questions, but I want to open it up for any Anyone that might have questions? So <clears throat> if I'm gonna ask some tough love questions, okay? Good, now I like it even better. So Gary, this isn't for you, this is for oh, the group. Okay. I like being checked on because then I feel like it was worth me being there. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some tough love questions. When I go in into contractors and I, I've trained thousands of contractors over the years and certainly like Travis says a TM, you know, one of one I would I never really even thought of myself as a as a territory manager, more as a business advisor, you know. And one of the questions that I would always ask the uh, the the dealer is do you believe in maintenance do you believe in uv lights and everybody raise their hand everybody raise their hand and so then the first thing the second thing you ask them is okay how many of you actually own a maintenance plan with your company or actually how many of you own a uv light in your air conditioning system so and then you don't see anybody's hand go up. They're all a little embarrassed because they don't have one themselves. So how can you go into someone's home and talk to them about maintenance or talk to them about a UV light or a nice filter if you don't even own it yourself? So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is everyone on this call, uh, whether you're a decision maker, an influencer, or a participant, a user, um, I would say that um, uh, get involved with the maintenance plan with your company. If you're the owner of the company, you own the company, and you say, well, you know what, I just do it myself. I know because I used to be an owner of a company, I never had time to do maintenance on my own air conditioner, okay? Um, so I own a maintenance agreement with an AC company here in town, and they come out every every six months and and it's amazing i actually get to see how the technician interacts with me and i can tell you most maintenance technicians when they come out they believe they're there just to do a job on your air conditioner not even really to consult with you about what it is that 
that uh, that that you uh, that may be going on in your life. Like they show up and they just, where's the air conditioner at? And what I would like for you, my technicians to do if I were in business, I would like them to, to ask some questions. I would like them to ask, you know, how, how has the air conditioner been running? Uh, I can look at the history and see when we've been out last, make sure that you don't step on your own previous service techs. But one thing, there's a few things that I want to point out. And if you take anything out of Gary's presentation, and uh, perhaps maybe Gary, you could uh, claim the host back again. Um, in your presentation. Oh, um, I think you have to go back to me. Okay, so um, I would like for you to go to the screen that uh, has the the chart. Oh, the microwatt chart. So the 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 three. Uh, I'm sorry. The the the, uh, the the pie chart. Oh, okay. Well, we gotta find one that's it's near the beginning. Yeah. It's amazing what we can go through in a short time. There we go. So out what so I actually wrote an article and you can go into the help section and read it. It came out in my newsletter that I wrote uh it came out on Monday. You can read this article and there's, I think I said there was six aspects to indoor air quality, but the really the three that the CDC, so of, of the six that I talked about, one was an interview, like how do we get in front of the customer and talk to them about these things? And, and like Gary said, it's so important right now because the, the, this virus is causing us to have the lowest hanging fruit. And he's right. You're going to have some of these other industries that have nothing to do with HVAC. They're going to be out there wanting to try to sell them something that they want to buy, right? And your job is to figure out there's only three areas, particulates, bioaerosols, bio means living, aerosol means airborne, and then volatile organic compounds, VOCs. So when you think of VOCs, think chemicals, think, uh, you know, like a, a you buy a new house and the carpet off gases for two or five years, depending on how much formaldehyde they put in to the carpet. And so what you don't want to do is sell something to someone that they don't need. I'm not about selling something to someone that, that they don't need it, but I can tell you if I feel like they need it and I don't own it in my own home, then I feel like I'm selling something to them that, that like I'm not living up with my own integrity. Does that make sense? So, so Travis, like with all your people, when you talk to all your dealers, have them, you know, I, I would, I would even go so far as to say, when you get in front of a bunch of dealers as a territory manager and you, and you say, you guys believe in maintenance, I would like to see an AC company owner write a check for whatever the maintenance is to the company to send a tech to his home because that that to me tells tells me as a maintenance guy my owner believes in it if he believes in it then I should sell it too and then I should also put in a UV light right I always struggle with you know like when you go buy a car and you you go to the Honda dealership and you ask the guy well which one of these do you drive and he goes well I drive a Toyota well that tells me a lot about what he believes and what he sells you know maybe he should go work at the Toyota dealership so, um, Travis, how do you do you how do you deal with with those kind of things? I get some feedback on that. Well, from the maintenance from the maintenance standpoint, I mean, I think it's most of the guys I talk to they're they're sending their techs out anyway, and it's usually a lot of times they're sending them on. I mean, they have secret shoppers and they're doing different things anyway to as far as evaluating their guys, but they'll send the guys over, especially times like right now, right? They got to keep them busy. They're doing different things with them. Um, you know, every time we have Gary or someone from his team out and they do the presentation, they have a great deal where they're giving away units for the technicians if they sell, you know, so if they sell one, what is it, Gary, if they sell one for the week that they're there, they get one free for their home. Yeah. Well, when we, when we do it, 
a, a training, even when we do these, these web trainings with them, we give them five business days from the day of the training. And any, anything that tech sells, we give them free to put in their house. So we hopefully get all the products in their home. And, and the stories are, well, they're just fun. You know, two weeks ago, I, I was doing a, 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 a um, web meeting with one of our contractors and we were talking about this and one, one of the techs chimed in that that's ha, has the filter and the UV in his house. And he, he said that, that we, uh, we like grapefruit. And he said, we have a basket on the kitchen counter and every week his wife buys grapefruits. We put them in and, you know, everybody just takes them in the morning for breakfast and does their thing. And he said, I can tell you that great grapefruits keep five days. And he said, at the end of five days, they start getting this green fuzz growing on them. And, and it's, it's the way it is. And he said, that's, you know, the way it's always been. And he said, what's interesting. He says, I put, I, I want, he gave me a, the, the UV and polarized me to put in my house. And he said, guess how long grapefruits keep now? And I said, five days. And he laughed. He said, I've got a grapefruit sitting on my counter for three months. And that thing, it, it says it's getting a little wrinkly, tired looking, but there's nothing growing on it. And he said, I'm <laughs> telling you, five days was all we ever got. And I said, well, that is interesting because, you know, I, I said, I know, I know you, UV deactivates mold spores. And I said, there must be enough, you know, mold or fungus spores floating around in the air, you know, that land on that grapefruit that started that growing. But so he's, he's supposed to be doing a written testimonial on it. I said, I said you, now you said it, you got to write it down so we can share that. Said, but it's just cool to, you know, what we're used to hearing is, you know, my, my son no longer needs his inhaler, or, you know, the kids sleep all the way through the night and, and don't need asthma medication any, anymore. And that's, that's gotten boring because that's just the normal, you know, we hear that thousands of times a year. But yeah, the, the grapefruit one, I, I, I'd never heard it before. I thought it was really cool. <laughs> so, so Gary, we have a question um, from Josh. He says, how are these wired in to only come on when the blower comes on and then PC motor versus variable speed? Uh, if, if it's a gas system, we have an EAC terminal, which is absolutely perfect. They're, they're usually rated for um, at least 75, 80 watts, and the unit's going to pull 48 watts. So the EAC terminal is very happy with that wire to it, and it'll, it'll just come on when the blower comes on. If it's a heat pump, uh, we're not going to have an electronic air cleaner terminal, so that's not going to be available. We'll use, we have current sensing relays that, that we make available for it, where you, you take take a power lead that's feeding the, the blower module on the AC side of it, run it through the current sensing relay, loop it through twice, hook it back up. And then when there's a load on that wire, that relay closes and we'll turn the unit on and off. If it's not a communicating system, so it doesn't care when we add little relays um, to the 24 volt side, then the simplest thing on a heat pump would be to just come off common and G, which is a fan terminal. So every time the blower comes on, it just clicks in that little fan relay and brings the unit on. But um, three three easy options, and uh, it's 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 yeah, it's it's no problem. It's it's a little tougher on on, on the Infinities because they're they're they've done a phenomenal job of making everything Rolex, uh, not Rolex, but um, Molex connectors where you know you can unplug the blower and put in a new one and plug it back in. So it's a little harder sometimes to find a wire to run through that current sensing relay, but and the guys the guys figure out how to do it. So so I can tell you that when I sold, uh, and I've managed an IQ business many years ago in the late 80s, early 90s, we had several, several trucks that went out and did duct cleaning and we installed UV lights. And this chart right here is really timeless because this is the same chart that I used back in 1991 um, and through probably 99, whenever uh, I got out of the business and into the territory manager side. But to me, this is the one chart that everyone should absolutely get familiar with because what you can do with this chart is when you ask a customer what kind of allergies or asthma do they have, you can apply whatever it is, the solution based on this chart. So Gary, if I said I had a, if I said I had a, uh, an allergy to formaldehyde, 
what would I want to, that would be a what? That would certainly be in the volatile organic compounds. And what's <clears throat> nice about formaldehyde, it's, it's a very easy, easy gas to oxidize. Um, two oxygen molecules will latch onto it and it breaks it to carbon dioxide and, and water. So it's, it's, it's again, one of the ones where we're easy to do. We, we don't offer a oxidation only unit. So that, that would end up being that 403 unit. We're, we're gonna end up um, neutralizing bacteria and viruses and oxidizing gases in that, in that case. So they, they would actually end up taking care of two, two of the problems when we're targeting um, really just one of them. So what if I said that I had a, a, dust, a dust issue, like I, I was allergic to dust? That, then, then it would be particles on the red, red part of the pie, and it would be the polarized media air cleaner. And, you know, that's, that's always fun to talk about because, you know, telling people how small that stuff is is, is what, what really brings it to line. And, you know, again, you know, you, you, you've got a, a conventional filter in your system, which keeps the equipment clean, but the tiny particles that aggravate our allergies go right through it. I have something unique. It's actually an electric filter, works like a magnet. It'll slide right in where your current one is and it'll remove those. And I'm extremely confident you'll see a, a, a huge improvement in how you feel in the house with it. And um, done, done deal. It takes, you know, each of these takes basically 30 seconds to describe to the homeowner. It's, it's, it's just, it's education. It's really the same thing as when, when you when you go in and and you know for a for a no cool call and you know it's it's a it's a 15 year old condensing unit and you know the 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 fan motors shot shot on the top and you know the guys are used to going in and, and talking about repair or replace it's education process again you know there, there's just no it's it, we I could possibly fix this for you but to spend five hundred dollars on this 15 year old unit ma'am is you know, it doesn't make sense. The refrigerants are no longer available for it. So if we get any leakage, we're not going to be able to repair this at the end of the life. You know, I'd recommend replace with an energy efficient unit. That was actually a lot more work than talking about asthma and allergies and, and why would we remove the particles. So the guy's are already mentally completely capable of doing this. And, and this, this is actually a, a lighter version of, of what they do all day long every day. So what if I said, hey, you know, you know, this coronavirus thing has got me really upset and everyone in my home is healthy right now and I want them to ma maintain. We're not, we're kind of half, you know, sheltering in place. What would I put in my house to, to, to take care of anything, any kind of virus? You know, that I'd have to have to talk about the all, all three pieces of the pie in that case, because they're all, they're all involved in it. You know, you know, the, the, the UV, is, UV is going to deactivate microorganisms going through the duct. So the least expensive solution would be that, that 401 unit. And the other, the, other, the other thing to consider is when, when we have these microscopic particles floating around that viruses can land on, we don't want something conveying them that holds them in the air. We want them to, to be able to go right to the floor when you, when you sneeze. So particle removal along with, with the UVC are, are both part of it. If you're only going to do one or the other, I'd almost have a hard time deciding which one I like better because I always say, you know, we're a manufacturer of UV. The filtration products is, is a partnership we have with, with one of our OEM partners. But I, and so the only reason I'm saying this is so the, the, the Polaris Media is not you know, out of my production floor right now, um, UV units are, and I would still encourage a homeowner to do filtration first because the microscopic particles are all the, the allergy type things are coming from, and it's it's still a big part of, of conveying viruses around with them floating around on these on these suspended particles. So if we're only going to do one, I might prefer filtration, but. Um, financially, I'd rather they put in the UV, but being honest, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so an interesting so, balance. So why don't you give me back the, uh, the host, and I'm going to take them to the website real quickly and just go over just a few things. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody can see 
Hang on, let me see if I can get this. Yep, you should be able to go. All right, can you see my screen now? Yep. All right, now. So this is your website, correct? Yes. All right, do you guys have a published that video you showed, is that video published somewhere? Yeah, it's under UV air purifiers, or well, no, I'm sorry, Pure Flow air cleaners. So it, on was, YouTube? it was there, it's, at, it's on the top of that site. Uh, yeah, then Polaris Media demo video right there. All right, so is this on, oh, so it's on Vimeo? Yep, it's coming off Vimeo. Okay, so if you can share the embed code for this video for me. Absolutely. What I can do, or what a dealer can do, so we're gonna log into the site, and I'm going to go to, this is in the admin, I'm gonna to go to the defaults, and I'm going to go to company defaults. I'm going to scroll to the bottom. And at the very bottom of company defaults is our upgrades. Okay. And in our upgrades, I'm going to add. And I have this thing called, uh, let's, let's talk about, uh, what's one upgrade you think you would, you would like to add that that uh, you have a video on. It's the polarized media demo. Yeah, there's a couple of videos on there, but yeah, that would be. So what, what model is that? that? That would be back on that pure flow, um, P6100. Okay. So I have this thing that I like to call R and D. It's, it's not research and development, it's rob and duplicate. Yeah, love what it. I like to do is take the information from your website and just take it over and put it on to our website. So what we would do is uh, I could even take this right here and paste it over here. But let's, I think you said that that particular MSRP was, was it 895 or 695? Um, oh yeah. I think you're in the ballpark though. So if you take this, yeah, that's fine. Let's see if I can find the embed code. Channel filters. They're not a. So if you can share this embed code with everyone, what we would do is put this embed code right here, and then what would happen is when a customer, when a dealer does a proposal, they can get a link to the website, a a link to the brochure and then a video that when the technician is in the uh, so this would be a this is this product right here yes so I could actually take a picture of this save it I'm going to load that picture now. Okay, let's, let's just call this, uh, what'd you call it? The premier. Polarized meteor cleaner. All right. And then once I have the embed code, I'll have to show you with a different, since you don't have the embed code, I'll have to show you what it looks like on a, a different product. But whenever the proposal comes up and we look at the possible options, a picture tells a thousand words, but man, a video will tell a million words. So when I come down to, 
Let's just create a proposal really quick. I'm going to go to my upgrades and we will add the Premier Cleaner to it. And I'm going to add that Infinity Air Purifier as well so you can see how the video works. I'm going to click Save. And then print. So the customer can see their equipment options. And then if we've gone through the process of asking them all those questions about, you know, who in the home and, and then we gave them the option to, to, to uh, install an upgrade. So this would be my selling price. And as you see, if I get your embed code, we could put that so that it plays for the customer on their device. So instead of handing over a brochure that they may or may not read, like I said, a, a picture will tell a thousand words, but a, a video will tell a story. Um, That's perfect. That's really nice. So if we can get that video embed code, I can add that to um, to this call so that people can add those to the uh, their upgrades. Um, but the last thing I wanted to show, we're running over a little bit, but the last thing I want to show is uh, under where it says welcome and in the admin it says library, I have added something that I used back when I was in sales in the home and it's called a solutions assessment. If you click on that link and download it, basically what it will do is it will give you a planned out interview of the cust for the customer so that it keeps you on track with what you want to ask them in the home. And you'll notice that one of the questions is who in, who in your family suffers from allergies or asthma? And the, uh, whatever answer that is, you notice an open-ended question, whatever answer that they give you, you'll want to discover more about it if they say, well, little Johnny has allergies. Really, what are his allergies? And you, you want to just dive deeper into finding out because at some point, what you want to do is take them to this chart right here and live by this chart. So particulates, bioaerosols, and VOCs, whatever the three items that it could be, that's the solution that you want to provide. Okay. The article that I spoke about, you can, you actually can see the article in, I emailed it out on Monday, but I believe you can actually probably find it in the help section. So when you go to up at the top, it says help. And then let me see if it's in, uh, So here it is right here, how to speak to the customer about the coronavirus. And it goes through the six, six aspects of indoor air quality. Um, and then basically it goes through discovery and then it talks about a lot about what we talked about today. Bioaerosols, particulates, VOCs, humidity control, um, humidification, source removal, which is duct cleaning, ventilation, and then if you have any questions, I'm glad Travis, I'm, there, I think there are a couple other TMs on the call today, but um, these guys, um, they have access to these representatives like Gary, um, um, so they can be in intercession. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not selling this product. We're not a distributor. We're just here to help you figure out how to get it into a home. So, um, it's about 2.11. I've gone over about, about 11 minutes, but I want to ask, are there any questions anybody has before we, uh, before we end the call? Questions, feedback.
You good, Travis? Yeah, good information. Thanks, guys. Okay. So tomorrow, um, tomorrow's call, and Gary, I appreciate you being on the call. You're welcome to um, anytime you want to talk about some of this stuff. You're welcome to join us. Um, tomorrow's call, we're going to be talking about um, financing integration and strategies. Um, there's been some changes in, I mean, just since the last week, there's been some changes in financing. Um, you may have heard of uh, one of the financing companies, Redbrook, stopped offering their, their fu funding um, through, I, I believe it was tomorrow or tonight at 5, 5 p.m. So um, it really is never more an important time than to help your customer find a way to pay for something that can give them uh, uh, comfort, uh, better health, and having a, a way to pay for it because no one ever has fifteen thousand dollars in the bank to buy an air conditioner and a and a uh, and, and a filter or whatever. So, um, if, if that's it, I'll uh, hang on for about a minute. If anybody has any questions, um, and then we'll close down the call. Thank you again, Gary. Any, is there anything you would like to say before you hang up? No, I really appreciate the opportunity to to be on with you and anytime. I can, you know, be on for, for some questions or stuff. It's, it's, it's hard for me to do a little, little five minute presentation. I kind of push this one, but it kind of have to walk through it to get the idea of the process and the craziness behind it. But anything future, just questions and answers. I'm always, you know, very happy to be on and appreciate you know, the exposure and getting to talk to the guys. It's great. Absolutely. It's, it's my pleasure for you to be on the call. And well, I will post this to YouTube. Travis, I got a, a question from one of your guys. Uh, they couldn't make it. So if you'll let your people know that it'll be on YouTube for them to be able to, to access later in the day. Absolutely. Okay. Will do. Thanks, bud. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate okay. it. Everybody have a good day. You too. You still there, Dwayne? I'm here. Um, I'm, I'm here in uh, Columbus, Ohio. I'm a um, carrier dealer with RSC. Hey, bud. Um, yeah. I appreciate you doing these uh, videos. Uh, anything, anytime I can get some extra information, uh, learn something new, I, I take advantage of it. Um, I had a question when it comes to, uh, I noticed that, um, do you have, there's some generic, there's a, um, the default section within your uh, biz pro. Is there some of those embed codes for some of that carrier equipment that you, um, you had on there? The, 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 the filter, I seen you had the Remy halo. Is that possible? Can I get uh, those codes to, to have it put into my software that I'm using currently? They're well, your the software, but I'm using. Yeah. So, um, so go to YouTube. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yep. So what you want to do is go to YouTube and let's okay. just go to Remy Halo. Remy Halo. Are you, okay. so do you see it? Do you want me physically going on my end or just following you what you're doing? I want you to just watch what I'm doing. Okay. So you see, I, I'm on YouTube and I'm searching Remy Halo. Yep. And what I want to do is I want to find the, the person that submitted the video needs to be the manufacturer of the video. Like I wouldn't want to put this Island Air one of Southwest Florida because that's going to be some, at, at the end of that video, his phone number is going to be on that call on that video. Okay. <laughs> so I want to use this one. 
And I want to use, I want to use the, the latest one. So this one says three years ago. I don't want to use that one. I want to use the one that says five months ago. Okay. So click on that. Uh -huh. In the LED air purification system. So if that's the one you want to use, you're going to click share. And then you're going to click embed. And then you're just going to copy this code right here. Uh -huh. So you select the, all the code and then click copy. And then let's go back to So I'm going to go to defaults, company, mm -hmm. at the bottom under upgrades. Yep. And right here, paste. Now, what I'm going to, what, what you need to do is change this 560 to 130 and change that 315 to 100 because what that does that's telling the video how big to be on the page gotcha and if it's and if it's the youtube will only let you export it at the 560 width and what happens is when you when you send it out to the customer if they're looking at it on their phone or an ipad it'll be larger than the iPad, so it won't even show up. Okay. Okay. All right. So now let's say uh, we're going to charge $1,250 for that. Then what you can do is go back to YouTube, go back to So remember I said R&D, no one tells their story better than they do. Rob, yeah. duplicate. Uh-huh. Just come right here. Copy. Paste. Hey. Okay. Save. That's all you do. Carrier has their own page. So let's go uh, carrier home comfort so carrier at home that's the, that's it right there uh-huh so click on that now there's a lot of videos on here i mean there's just a, a lot of stuff so click right here for videos mm -hmm. and then you can kind of scroll down and show look at you know other stuff or you can search. So let's search infinity air purifier. So here's the latest one 10 months ago. Okay. Air infinity air purifier creates Share, embed, copy. Share, embed, copy. One thirty, one hundred. Okay. Now, the guys at Carrier don't normally put, in, in this case they did, so they have their own, like, they ex explain it here. So we're going to copy this. And we're going to paste it here. And then put our price, the order in which you want it to appear. 
and then I'll simply click save. Are you using a uh, Are you using an Apple product? It's a Mac, yeah. Okay. It's this a is a silly question, but I'm using Mac now. How did you just copy and paste? I seen how, I know how you copy it, but I didn't know how you paste it. Is it just a, a click? Once you copy it, you just once you go to where you're wanting to go, you just click it and it automatically paste it. So, Control C or uh -huh. Command C is copy. Uh huh. Command V is paste. Ah, see, I'm trying. I'm learning the. I'm learning the Apple. Command V, or you could do that. Okay, cool. Somehow I went and put uh, one of the I ways. I went and tried to copy one from the from YouTube, the video, and put it in into the same way or into this upgrade area, like you did. And I went to play the video, and it was you playing a. I went and clicked on a video on an estimate, and it was you explaining onboarding. I don't know how <laughs> that happened. That was that was weird. Um, how did I do? Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> I, I don't know how I did that though, because I even matched the codes up. What I have that's in the the pasted section matches the code that's on the YouTube video, but yet it plays you. So. Yeah, I'm not sure how you, it would have to be. It, it can only be that it's a, you know, you going to show you another little trick. Yeah. This is really cool. <clears throat> so let's go, uh, let's go add a part. And uh, what's your biggest seller? What do you sell the most? Is As far as on service or equipment or? Equipment. 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 Like a specific type of, type of furnace or t air conditioner or yeah, whatever furnace. Uh, furnace uh, uh, fifty nine TP six. So here's a. Willis Carrier invented modern air conditioning in 1902. Today. All right, I'm gonna take this little video right here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna copy this video. And I'm gonna call this Why carrier furnace this, I'm going to add this as a part. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to put the embed code in there. I'm going to change it to 130 by 100. You have to put them, you have to treat it like a part. So you have to, you can put a dollar in there for cost. It's not going to hurt anything. Right. Right. I'm going to click save. Now, when you build your template, so let's do this uh, three ton AC with gas furnace. I'm going to edit this template. And under this template, I'm going to put a part that says why carrier gas furnace. Okay. All right, let's create a proposal. Usually the last one you saved is gonna be at the top of the list. Okay. Create proposal. All 
always print the cover page. Hey man, I appreciate you coming on these calls, by the way. Oh, I, this is the time to do it for us. And I appreciate you being available and doing this. this uh, of course. It's valuable. Hey, real quick, yeah. why do you have that up there? How do you get, how do you get those colors? Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. I like those colors, okay. So, so now right here, Carrier invented modern air conditioning in 1902. Today, Carrier is a world leader in heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration solutions. That's pretty cool. On our solid history of proof. Because I, I attached, it's an informational video. You could put it under every unit if you wanted to, like a different, you know, informational. Um, I don't know how big your company is, but if you have like a like a video of how you do installations. Uh -huh. If you have a, if you have a YouTube channel, I would create a YouTube channel and in that YouTube channel, I would begin um, uploading. Uh, I would begin uploading customer testimonials from when you complete jobs. Let me, uh, let me show you, let me show you my channel. Okay. okay. So here is uh here's one I did three weeks ago. It had 80 views. So I'm here with David at Donovan, and he's uh, doing maintenance on my unit uh, here. This is our first time out, and uh, you know I, I thought my unit's three years old. I mean, I so if I had so like let's say that I you know I was the in this case I'm the customer, he's the dealer. But if it were the other way around, this is what it would look like, right? So. Let me go to my channel again. These are all the videos I've ever done. You got a lot of them. Yeah. How do you find your uh, channel? So go to just uh, search enterprise selling solutions. Okay. So I, so I did some, uh, we did some professional ones, right? So I, mean, I don't, so I have a questions from contractors about our agency has, you know, um, the ability to do, uh, it looks like I'm sitting in a branch there, but it's actually just a, you know, a green screen and the guys, you know, took, we took about a half a day and we just sat down and did some questions. They asked me questions and I answered them and then they put music behind it, you know? Oh, that's but cool. the point is that if you go out to a customer's house and you get them to give you a testimonial, let me see if I can find one that I'm talking about. And then you begin to build this library of testimonies from customers. Standing here, I'm at the uh, Low Miller uh, Bryant Dealer Award meeting. I'm here with the guys from DNI, and I want uh, so I got Chris, and he's just going to say a little bit about Propose and Close, the program that we have that we've developed. Yeah, Propose and Close has been instrumental in our success. Definitely, it's a. Uh... So just Im imagine yourself with your customer, and like you just flip them on their AC unit, and and. Uh, 
they're the happiest they're going to be because you just made it with their air conditioners running. That is and true. You're going to get, and you're going to get a testimonial from them. You couldn't spend $5,000 on a video crew to come out and get that value with just a selfie video on your phone. And it's so much more credible than that video I showed you where I was sitting there right here. Right. Most people won't watch this. And certainly one of the big struggles we have in our industry is fine. But you look at a video where I just did a selfie with, with, a, with a customer and telling me how great we are. Look at this. I got, I have one like on this, on this <laughs> one like three views. But on that other video, I guarantee you a bunch of people looked at it. And then once you have it, you can share it to Facebook and then create yourself a YouTube channel and then just create or, or add that post to the channel. And then you end up getting all these. So this one had 47 views. Um, you build up this library of, of uh, testimonials, you know, if you begin to get, you know, credible, credible things that people can watch. And, and video is the next upcoming thing. It really is. Yeah. Maybe I'll go get me a, one of them vlogging uh, cameras. That way I can look pretty professional with it. Hey man, all I have is a is an iPhone 10. Yeah, that that works just fine. I know they got uh, the youngsters are all about vlogging. My daughter's been asking for one so she can do some YouTube stuff. But anyway, I, this is a great idea, and I appreciate that. I, I I don't currently have a YouTube, but I think that's gonna that needs to be on my list. Um, do you? One, the, the, the color scheme stuff you talk, talked about. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And then. Go to, go to more. Quality levels. So. Edit. You can reset to the default or you can choose your own colors. Okay, because mine, I, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of the, mine's like orange and some other color, and I like the blues, and I like some of the, the lighter grays and things like that. I think that's a little bit more uh, calming. Um, I just too. like those colors better. But, um, and then one last thing, I guess, that, that assessment sheet you showed during that meeting, would you mind sharing that? Yep. Uh, yeah, it's uh, so go to um, library. So welcome library. Uh huh. And it's right there, third from the bottom. Oh, it's in the library. So these are all okay. I, I guess I hadn't played around in there. Now those all, um, they. Okay, never mind. Those are all accessible. Like, um, say, I have a guy that sells for me. He can. Is there anything he shouldn't or shouldn't see in that library? Or um, I'm not sure that it's, I'm not know if a salesperson can see the library. Let me see. Is that more for printout stuff? That's it's more for owners, really. Let me just see if I can. Uh, may, maybe it is in there. I. Yeah, it looks like a salesperson can get it too. Okay, so then it's not something that it's okay. Okay, All right. I didn't know that was in a library. I guess I wouldn't pay any very good attention. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here. There, like, uh, uh, if you want to go through the low count product tour, click on that. I think you have to sign in first. Well, that's not cool. I hate when things don't work. Well, you'll have that. 
sometimes we click on things we don't mean to. And Let me see if uh, it was that. There you go. So basically, you have to be logged into the admin to see this. Um, and it, it basically is just the 13 steps to show you how to build your, uh, we've tried to put together, I have videos for all this stuff. I have brochures, I have, you know, these, these uh, we call them uh, product tours and it ex explains things without, you know, we, we obviously can do a webinar and I've actually really enjoyed these webinars. It, it has helped me to, to, to get, you know, connected with everybody and, and, and hear some feedback. So. Well, you, you helped us when you came down into Columbus at RSC, you helped us set this up uh, for this area. So ours, mine should be set up. Um, okay, good. Good. Um, so, Hey, I, I, I don't want to hold you any longer. I, I appreciate all the extra time you shared with us uh, today yeah, and with me individually. This is great. Um, I hope you're uh, staying uh, safe down there and, and, uh, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow probably. Hey, buddy, I, I appreciate you attending. You too. Stay safe and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Have a good one. Thanks, buddy. You too. Bye-bye. Yeah.